chapter five of Everything on a Waffle, Lena's Boiled Potatoes. When I got home from the sheriff's, Uncle Jack was in the kitchen deep frying tater tots and making buffalo chicken wings. This was my favorite of his repertoire, as he very well knew, which otherwise tended towards frozen pot pies and TV dinners. Next to the kitchen table was a box, and in the box was a puppy. Uncle Jack wiped his hands on his apron, which he wore to protect his suit, and squatted down by me. What's its name? I asked, picking it up. I don't know. You couldn't name her, he said, patting her behind the ears. One of my client's dogs had a litter of a, f a few weeks ago, and they just started to let them go. I always wanted a dog. You always wanted a dog, but you never gave any thought to what you would name it? I thought, puppy, said Uncle Jack, getting up and returning to his frying. I put the puppy back in the box. They found Mum's jacket on an island. I know, said Uncle Jack, not turning around, just wiping his hands on his greasy apron and throwing chicken wings into the deep fryer. How do you know? I asked, getting up. Sheriff got me on my pager, said Uncle Jack, and that was the last we said about that. I have to go off to the cinnamon house again after supper. Oh yeah, what is this cinnamon house thing? I asked, getting out the knives and forks. Well, Miss Bailey apparently read somewhere in some How to Sell Your House book that if you burn cinnamon on the stove, it makes the house smell warm and inviting. The problem is, she has been burning whole jars of it in the oven so that every time you walk in the door, the smell hits you over the head and nearly knocks you unconscious. Why don't you just tell her to stop? I asked, hel helping Uncle Jack put dinner on the table. I'm going to, said Uncle Jack, as soon as I can think of a tactful way to do it. We don't want to embarrass her and have her give the listing to someone else. I'd like to sell that house soon. I, knew, I need a few quick sales right now so I can turn around and get the townhouses and condominiums going. We sat down and gnawed on wings. Why don't you take me with me on your rounds after school? Maybe I'll think of something, I said. Never mix business with pleasure, Primrose. Did I ever tell you about Lena and the boiled potatoes? I asked. No, I don't believe you did, said Uncle Jack, leaning back in his chair and stretching contently. The phone rang before I had a chance to say anything more about boiled potatoes, the recipe to follow, and he had to rush out to show a house, so it wasn't until later that I got a chance to make my point. After he called, after he left, I called Miss Bowser at the restaurant. I was just wondering, I said, if you have any recipes for boiled for potatoes. For what? barked Miss Bowser. I could hear the sound of pans, of pan lids hitting the floor and general pandemonium. I'm sorry, Primrose, but we've got a full restaurant t tonight for some reason, and it's a madhouse in here. Doesn't your uncle have any cookbooks? No, I don't think so. He's not here. He went out to show a house, I said. There was a pause. Then Miss Bowser said, well, come on over. We'll make potatoes around doing other... For heaven's sake, be careful! She shouted at someone and hung up. I put my jacket on and dashed over, and we made boiled potatoes, which Miss Bowser heaped on the order she was sending out. A little something extra until it was time for bed. Then, Miss Bowser had a waiter drive me home. Uncle Jack still wasn't back, and the ghosts were slamming a puck around the gym at a furious rate, but I was so tired from cooking that I fell right asleep anyway. After school the next day, I ran to Miss Perfidy's to borrow a cookbook before going home. Uncle Jack had no appointments until later, so he and I took Malamar to the beach. I had decided to name the puppy after my favorite cookie because she was round and white and black like a Malamar. We watched Malabar, Malamar chase the seagulls with great hope and purpose while I told Uncle Jack about Lena and the boiled potatoes. Okay, this happened last year, I said. Every year, the elementary, middle, and high schools have a big fair to, t to raise money. There are simple rides and fish ponds and cakewalks and stuff, and lots of contests for quilters and jam makers and chutney makers. The schools send all the kids home with a list of different kinds of context tests to enter. I had brought my list home the day Mom and I were visiting our next-door neighbor, Lena. She had moved here six months earlier with her husband and two small children. She had been a lawyer until she had her second baby and decided to stay home with her kids until they were old enough to go to school. She's kind of restless, my mother had said to me. 
Helena was always outside, sweeping her walk or cleaning her windows or putting pots of ger geraniums around. Once she dug up her whole tulip bed and replanted them in color-coordinated rows. My mom felt sorry for her, but I didn't see why. You could tell she had the perfect life. She was always telling you so. <laughs> she was always telling you so. James has taught himself to read, even though he's only four, and I don't know what you do to continue to intellectually stimulate a child like that, she said to my mother and me when we came over to visit that day. We looked down to where James was putting a twig up his nose and playing with his matchbox cars. And we're so happy here in a small town, away from the pressures of big city life. It will be good for Ryan. I'm afraid he is a handful. If this were a larger town, I would consider bringing Ryan to a therapist. I don't think he is displaying age-appropriate behavior. He's always running around. We watched him chase a cat up a tree. He was very agile. He's just got a lot of energy. Boys do, said my mother. Still, I'd like to have him tested, said Lena. I suggested that she go to see Miss Honeycutt, but my mother said she didn't see much the point in that and changed the subject. Then we went into Lena's kitchen for milk and cookies. Lena has 16 kinds of cookies on her counter. What is this for? A bake sale? asked my mother. I wanted to find a nutritious cookie that was appealing to both children and adults alike, so I tried a few kinds this morning. After dinner, I'll try a few more, said Lena. I think that the apricot thumbnail cookies may be close, but I'm not sure that they will appeal to Ryan on a long-term basis, or whether, when they're older and I pack them in their school lunches, they will return their apricot filling if the lunch bag gets squished about in their knapsack in their knapsacks. You ought to enter these in the cookie contest at our school fair, I said. I showed Lena the contest list and she laughed. I love this, she said to my mother. Look, a boiled potato category. Entry must include a dozen boiled potatoes. It's harder than you'd think to make a bowl of a dozen perfectly uniform boiled potatoes, said my mom, evenly. Oh, come on now. How hard can it be, asked Lena. Then her eyes kind of glazed over. On the way home, I said to my mother that she ought to persuade Lena to enter the cookie contest because it was easier to win and she obviously knew her way around a cookie sheet. None of our business, said my mother. Well, it was a slippery slope from there right through the, to the contest day. Lena became obsessed with making a dozen perfectly boiled potatoes. She practiced day and night. Empty potato bags piled up on her back porch. Have you noticed, my father observed, looking next to the door and sniffing, that the whole block is starting to smell like potato salad? What do they do over there? It's just Lena and her boiled potatoes, said my mother. On the day of the fair, Lena came pounding on our door, sweat pouring down her forehead. The front of her apron was stained. She had pieces of potato clinging to her shoe. I can't find Ryan, she said. Oh goodness, said my mother, throwing down the book she had been reading. I'll come out and help you look. Never mind that, Lena said. I've got a pot of potatoes on the stove and six perfectly boiled ones, but I can't get the other six to come right, and I've run out of potatoes. And she began to cry. I was just on my way to the store to get some more. Can you watch James for me? She put James down on our doorstep, sniffled, wiped her nose on the back of her sleeve, ran to her car, and drove off to the supermarket. My mother and I glanced at each other and then washed off James, who appeared as if he'd been eating dirt, and walked around the neighborhood until we found Ryan, who was crawling in a neighbor's garden. When Lena's husband got home from work, my mother left James and Ryan with me and went quietly over to tell him that Lena was at school at the school fair waiting for the potatoes to be judged. And then, while the two of them looked at the kitchen, which had potato water and imperfectly boiled potatoes everywhere, she told him what had happened earlier in the day. He thanked my mother quietly, came over to our house and got the children, and the very next week, without an explanation or goodbye, the four of them moved away. Uncle Jack and I sat on a log. You do see the point of the story, don't you? I asked. Well, drawled Uncle Jack, so I interrupted him. The whole sad day of the boiled potatoes could have been avoided had my mother just taken my timely advice and told Lena to enter the cooking contest instead. Uncle Jack looked at me blankly. You remember my timely advice to you about taking me with you to show houses? I know people in town, and I know their ways. You're new here. I know what people are apt to do or not to do. 
I was lying. Mostly I kept to myself, and I thought people were extremely unpredictable. Malamar came racing up to us, wagging her tail and smiling. It was clear that she thought she had attained, if not her goal of vivisecting the entire bird population, at least a temporarily gull-free beach. We gave her a dog biscuit and stood up to go home. Never mind all that, said Uncle Jack so suddenly it made me jump. Can you make cinnamon rolls? If you can, make me some cinnamon rolls. I'll take you along the next time I show the cinnamon house. I nodded my head. How hard could it be? Another fun chapter, I think. Today we're going to make connections. So my question is, what connection did you make while reading? This could be a connection to your own life or something else you've read or watched. And if you can't think of a connection, go back and read some more and really think through what connections you can make. What, is, what, what does this remind you of? One connection I made was that the person boiling the potato was so, so obsessed with the contest. And I started thinking about what contests have people been obsessed with in the past. And on the way into school today, I listened to a podcast about superlatives, which is in high school when you get voted, like most likely to be president or best smile or whatever. And uh, this group of people were just totally obsessed with winning these superlatives. So that's my connection. The, the lady boiling the potato was obsessed with that, like these people in my podcast were obsessed with superlatives. So what connection did you make? Did something in that chapter remind you of something? How to make perfectly boiled potatoes. The most important thing about making perfectly boiled potatoes is to start with a dozen uniform red potatoes. So go to your green grocer or wherever you get your potatoes and don't buy a bag of them. Hunt through the loose piled up potatoes until you find a dozen that are medium sized and all almost exactly alike. Don't get any with scabs or strange growths or that look like they have a nose. Take them home and peel them. Put enough water in a large pot to cover your potatoes. Cook for 40 minutes, putting in more water if it boils out. Drain the potatoes and put them back in the pot. Put the pot back on the burner and shake it a bit so the potatoes dry over the heat. Then they're done. Now what you do with them is a matter of taste. Some people like sour cream, some like butter and parsley. Some people like ketchup or cheese. I like mustard. But Miss Bowser says, it is nobody's business what you do with your own potatoes. <laughs>